Okay, hello and welcome to our second lecture of the week in which we will attempt to finish chapter two. We'll see if we can actually make it. Um, we're only on the fourth section of chapter two because the sections are rather large. So we'll see if we can actually make it to the end or not today. If not, we'll uh, finish up in class uh, next week. And um, this uh, section, the final section in the uh, chapter is about the products of vectors. There are actually a couple different ways that you can multiply vectors together. And it matters which way you're using because the result is different in each case. With regular numbers, which are actually scalars, um, you can multiply them together really only one way. I mean, three times five means one thing and basically one thing only. And there's only one way to do it. And the result is always 15. <clears throat> but with vectors, that's not always the case. There are a couple different ways that you can multiply vectors together. And you'll end up with something different, depending on how you do it. And there's different ways of representing how to multiply vectors together, which uh, will make a, a big difference, unlike with just regular numbers. So uh, with regular numbers, you could say, say 5x3, that means 5 times 3, and the answer is 15. You can say 5.3, and that means 5 times 3, and the answer is 15. You could say 5 in parentheses, 3 in parentheses, and that means 5 times 3, and the answer is 15. So it does, you know, doesn't matter how you represent it. In vectors, it does matter how you represent it. X means a different thing from a dot. And so that's one of the things we're going to see. Uh, and you have to keep them straight because like I said, the result will be different for those two uh, representations. Uh, to get a couple of the basic rules out of the way first, uh, first of all, vectors, remember, can be multiplied by scalars. That's not new. We've done that many times already. And they can be multiplied by other vectors, which is what we're going to be doing in this section. Vectors can be divided by scalars because dividing a vector by a scalar is the same as multiplying it by one over the scalar. So, you know, uh, dividing a vector by two is the same as multiplying it by one over two. So, yeah, you can do that, but you cannot divide a vector by another vector. Can't do it because multiplication in vectors is different from multiplication of just numbers. Uh, with numbers, division is basically just the opposite of multiplication, but with vectors, it doesn't work that way. So you're not able to divide a vector by another vector. There are a couple, the uh, basically two ways of doing um, multiplication of vectors will give you what's known as either the scalar product or the vector product of vectors. You can get a scalar product of vectors, and that is when you're representing the multiplication by a dot between the symbols for the vectors. And that results in a scalar. A, uh, an example of that would be uh, work in energy relationships. So in um, physics, when we're not concerned with vectors, we often write the equation W equals F times D, work equals force times distance. <clears throat> with, uh, when we're concerned with vectors, force and, well, uh, in this case, we're usually dealing with straight line motion in which case the distance is the same as the magnitude of the displacement. <clears throat> and so when we're dealing with vectors, uh, we say that work is equal to the force vector dot the displacement vector. And that little dot there gives us what's known as the dot product or the scalar product of the vectors. And the result, work in this case, is a scalar meaning that it has no direction. It does have magnitude, but it doesn't have direction. Uh, the vector product of vectors, also known as the cross product of the vectors, leads to a vector. And uh, one, way, one place this is um, used would be in rotational motion. Uh, for instance, torque, which is a uh, force that causes, basically causes a rotation is known as force times lever arm. And let's see, um, 
when we're doing this in vector terms, force is a vector. Lever arm is um, lever arm is basically the distance from the center of the pivot to where the force is applied. So, like uh, if you're using a wrench to loosen a bolt, then um, lever arm would be the distance from the center of the bolt to where your hand is on the wrench applying the force. And that um, is considered a displacement because it has not only a distance, but um, a direction. So we would write this as x at four times, but also this is why we call it the cross product because it's uh, vector f times or x vector d for displacement. And out of that, we get torque, the symbol of which is the lowercase uh, Greek letter tau, because we've run out of t's. I mean, basically, lowercase t is time, uppercase t is temperature. Now what? Can't use uppercase tau in, from Greek because that looks exactly like an uppercase t. So lowercase t or tau it is. And that is also a vector. So when you do the cross product of two vectors, you get another vector. When you do the dot product of two vectors, you get a scalar. And we'll see that in more detail starting now, actually. So the scalar product, as I just mentioned, is also known as the dot product. And um, you know it's handy to remember as a dot product because it's symbolized, excuse me, by a dot between the symbols of the two um, vectors. So the dot product of vectors such as, for instance, A and B would be written as vector A dot vector B. And that mathematically would be equal to A, B cosine phi. A and B without the arrows over them being the magnitudes of vectors A and B respectively. And phi being the angle between um, the uh, vectors. The direction of the angle actually doesn't matter in this case. You can measure it either way, and you should get the same result. And that's because of what I've written here. Cosine of an angle should be equal to the cosine of the negative angle, which should be equal to cosine of 180 minus the angle, or 2 pi minus the angle if you're dealing in radians. Uh, all of those should be the same. That's the way the cosine function works. OK, it turns out if the angle is between 90 and 180 degrees, then the dot product is negative. And if it's because cosine is negative for those values of angles, and if a phi is between 0 and 90, then the dot product is positive because the cosine of angles between 0 and 90 are positive. A and B are magnitudes of vectors, so they will always be positive. Uh, and there are some rules that, are, that come in handy uh, to remember as you're working things out. They can save you a lot of time and effort. The dot product of any two parallel vectors, and that is vectors that point in the same direction, is always just the product of their magnitudes. Because if, for instance, we're assuming vectors A and B are parallel, that means that the dot product of A and B would be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between A and B. And if the uh, vectors A and B are parallel, then the angle between them is 0. And cosine of 0 is 1. So this is just AB times 1, which is AB, the magnitude of one vector times the, mag or times the magnitude of the other. So that definitely simplifies things, if you remember that. Also, the dot product of any two anti-parallel vectors. So if, say, exa uh, for example, A and B are now anti-parallel, pointing in the opposite directions, that would be equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of 180, because when they're pointing in exactly opposite directions, that means they're 180 degrees apart. And that will be equal to the negative of 
the magnitude of one vector times the other. And that's because cosine of 180 is negative one. All right. And the dot product of any two perpendicular or orthogonal vectors, if you prefer, should be zero. So for example, if we're assuming that A and B are perpendicular to each other, uh, that is vectors A and B are perpendicular to each other, then the dot product of A dot B should be magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. And if they're perpendicular, then that angle between them is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees though is zero. And zero times A times B is still zero. So if the angle, if the uh, vectors are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. And finally, uh, the dot product of any vector with itself, for instance, a vector a dot a, is just the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, a is itself obviously, so it obviously points in the same direction as itself, and the angle between A and itself would be zero, and the cosine of zero is one. So in other words, AA cosine zero is AA, and you might as well just call that A squared. So the dot product of any vector with itself is just the magnitude of that vector squared. Okay, so these are some very handy rules to keep in mind. <coughs> um, there's an example which says, uh, find the scalar product or the dot product, in other words, of the vectors in figure 2.13, which is way back on page 55. And they tell us to find the dot product first of vectors A dot F. Okay, the dot product of vectors a and f. And here I've drawn in, uh, they may be a little hard to see with the resolution of this camera, but uh, I've reproduced the um, vectors from page 55, so you don't have to turn back to it to see. Uh, vector a has a magnitude of 10. That's a little hard to read, but that says a equals 10. And it has an angle, which is called alpha here, is 35 degrees from the positive x axis. And vector f has a magnitude of 20. And it has an angle phi, because that's the closest Greek has to an f, of 110 degrees. OK, so. The uh, dot product would be magnitude of A times the magnitude of F times the cosine of the angle between them. So to find the, um, you know, the, the value of the angle between them, that would be the angle between 35 and 110. So all you have to do is just subtract those two numbers. And actually, it doesn't matter what um, direction you um, subtract them in. I took 110 minus 35 because it gives a positive number and people like dealing with positive numbers and I'm no exception. <clears throat> but you could do it the other way around and you get negative 75 degrees instead of positive 75 and you'd end up with the same result. Uh, so you end up with basically um, the magnitude of A is 10, magnitude of F is 20, and that's gonna be times the cosine of the difference between 110 and 35, which is 75 degrees. And when you work that out, you get uh, 51.76 something something, uh, which in more reasonable significant figures is 51.8. So that is your dot product. 51.8, you may notice, is just a number, which means it's a scalar because it has magnitude but no direction. And um, you don't need units for it to be a scalar. You can have units in a scalar, but you don't have to. Uh, just a number like 51.8 is a scalar also. Okay, uh, now we move on to take a look at scalar products of unit vectors in the normal XY or XYZ Cartesian coordinate uh, system. 
<clears throat> if you're dealing with unit vectors of axes, that is x, y, or z axis, or i, j, or k, as the unit vectors for those axes are usually written, then the dot product vanishes. When we say vanish, actually, we mean that it equals zero because the axes are perpendicular to each other. If you think of it, x, y, and z axes, no matter how you designate them, x, y, and z are perpendicular to each other. <clears throat> so if, for instance, if you take the unit vector for the x direction dot the unit vector for the y direction, that's unit vector i dot unit vector j, that would be equal to the magnitudes of vector i times the magnitude of vector j, uh, which by the way are each one, because you know that's the definition of the unit vector, times the cosine of 90, which is zero. And so you end up with one times one times zero, which is zero. Okay, so the dot product of the um, unit vectors of any two axes will be zero. So it works the same with any of the others. So i dot j is zero, um, you know, j dot k is zero, i dot k is zero, and it's the same if you do them in the other direction too. j dot i would also be zero, for instance. <clears throat> The uh, scalar product of a unit vector with itself should be one. And for instance, if you take um, uh, if you take say uh, unit vector i dot unit vector i, well, that's going to be uh, to write it in the same terms we did before. That would be the magnitude of unit vector i times the magnitude of unit vector i times the uh, cosine of the angle between them, which is zero degrees. And the, the magnitude of unit vector i, of course, is one. And to repeat myself, the, unit vec the magnitude of unit vector i is one. And the cosine of zero degrees is also one. And so one times one times one is one. And it works the same with any of the other unit vectors too, because for instance, if you had unit vector j dot unit vector j, well, the magnitude of unit vector j is one. And the magnitude of unit vector j is one, to uh, repeat myself. And the angle between unit vector j and unit vector j would be zero. So once again, that would be one times one times one, or one. Okay. <clears throat> now, for uh, vectors that are not unit vectors, uh, in general terms, we have the uh, scalar product of vectors A and B, or the dot product of vectors A and B. We know that A dot B is AB cosine phi. That is AB times the cosine of the angle between them. Um, if we have um, A times B cosine phi, if you want to look at it like that, then we can also write that as A, B perpendicular. And what that really means is the product of A times the orthogonal projection of B, which is B perpendicular, onto the direction of A. And on page 78, they, they draw diagrams of these. Um, this is interesting. It's not really terribly important for what we're going to be going over in the long term. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, except to mention it. Um, B times A cosine phi is another way of looking at that. And you can write that as BA perpendicular, which is the product of B with uh, orthogonal projection A perpendicular of the vector A onto the direction of B. Okay, that actually leads us to something um, 
useful, which is uh, the x component of a vector is the dot product of the vector with the unit vector i. So if you take vector a and find the dot product with the unit vector i, what you come up with is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of i times the cosine of the angle a. And that's, since the magnitude of the unit vector is 1, that's just a cosine theta, and that's a x. And it works similarly for y. Vector a times the unit vector j for the y direction <clears throat> would be equal to, as a dot product anyway, um, the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of j, which is uh, unit vector, so the magnitude is 1, times the sine of theta. OK? In other words, that's just a sine theta, which is a y. And actually, we've already seen these before. We've had uh, those equations before. And so this is just another way of getting to that result. OK. Um, some of the uh, rules for dealing with uh, scalar multiplication or dot products. I generally prefer to call them dot products because that kind of reminds you how it's written. It's written with a dot between the symbols for the vectors. Uh, um, <clears throat> so, so dot products are both commutative and distributive, which means you can do it in either order and it's, it's the same result. So vector A dot vector B is the same as vector D, B dot vector A. And it's distributive. So if you want to take the dot product of A with B plus C, you can write that as A dot B plus A dot C. So you distribute the A over the things that are being added up in the parentheses. So that can be helpful from time to time to know that. And equation 227 is an important one. That is, whoops, that the dot product of vectors A and B would be just AB cosine phi the angle between them. Phi is the angle between them. <clears throat> if you take the vectors, those vectors A and B in their component forms, of course, vector A would be the x, the x component of A times the unit vector in the x direction, which is I, uh, the y component of A times the unit vector in the y direction, which is J, and the z component of A times the unit vector in the z direction, which is K. And you'd have similar for uh, vector b. And then if you want to work out the dot product step by step, this is the way you can do it in terms of components. OK, this is um, the first line is not too hard to see because it's just basically this times this. So AXI plus AYJ plus AZK times BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. Now, of course, when you multiply things that are in parentheses by each other, you have to multiply each and every term by each and every other term uh, from one set of parentheses to another. And so that's what we've got down here. So uh, you can start out with um, multiply on the first top line here, multiplying AX times everything in the second set of parentheses. So AX and its unit vector times BX and its unit vector. So from that, we get AX, BX, and I dot I, because they both have the unit vector I. Then we take AX times unit vector I times the second thing over here, which is by times unit vector j, and we get ax, by, 
i dot j. Then we take ax times unit vector i times the third thing in the second set of parentheses, which would be bz times unit vector k. And we get ax bz i dot k. We're kind of segregating the um, x and y and z components versus the uh, unit vectors. <clears throat> and then the second line is where you take a y times unit vector j and multiply it by each of the three things in the second side of parentheses. So you get these. And then the third line is where you take a z times unit vector k times each of the things in the parentheses. And you get these three terms. And if you look through it, uh, you notice a few things. Um, sometimes we've got uh, something times a unit vector with a dot product of itself, like i dot i or j dot j or k dot k. And as we saw before, the scalar products of a unit vector with itself is one. So actually those terms can be kept around and i dot i becomes one. So this term just becomes ax bx. J dot J is one, so this term just becomes A Y B Y, and K dot K is one, so this term just becomes uh, A Z B Z. Notice all of the other terms have some unit vector for one of the axes times the unit vector for one of the other axes, like I dot J or I dot K. Well, scalar products of two different unit vectors of two different axes are zero. So i dot j is zero. So that whole term drops out. i dot k is zero. So that whole term goes away. j dot i, same thing, zero. j dot k, zero. k dot i, zero. And uh, what is this? k dot j, zero. <clears throat> and so these three terms here are the, the ones that I've circled are the only ones that we have left. And so what that all you know, reduces to is just a dot b equals ax bx plus a y b y plus a z b z. So in other words, um, you can also reduce the dot product to just the x components of the two vectors multiplied by each other, plus the y components of the two vectors multiplied by each other, plus the z components of the two vectors multiplied by each other. And that's in terms of the vector components. You can also use that. Uh, that is uh, the what the dot product is in terms of the vector components to find the angle between the vectors, because we know that a dot b is also equal to a b cosine phi, and that's equal to a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z. So we can basically take all of this, divide by AB, and we get cosine phi. If you want the angle itself, then that would be just the inverse cosine of AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ over AB. That is, um, remember, AX and BX would be the X components of vector A and B and so on. A, capital A, capital B in the, in the denominator, these are the magnitudes of the vectors themselves overall, not the X or Y components, but the magnitudes of the overall vectors. So if you have this information, you can find the angle. Okay, we're a little over for the first segment here, so um, I'm going to stop here and we'll pick it up in the second segment in a moment.